Hello everybody, welcome back to Desks and Dorks, your favorite board game design and creation podcast. I'm Kyle, and what's up? Hey, before we get started, if you would like to give us any amount of support, we would really appreciate it. You can go get yourself a $1 copy of an RPG. You can get Becoming Banana Bread, a game about sentient bananas that worship the god of the kitchen. Or you can get Red Panda Redemption about being a red panda cowboy. Those are $1 RPGs. You can get those in the description below for the price of less than a McChicken, uh, which is pretty great. Also, I've made playlists of all the videos. Y'all seem to like low-level monsters. You all seem to like our new series, It's Time to Stop. Plus, we have low-level party members or low-level players and an RPG design workshop. Uh, you can check out all of those playlists there. Or actually, if you just go to our channel button, you can check those out too. But without further ado, it's low-level monsters 13. Let's talk about it. Today, we're talking all about the town guard. Yes, that's right, the town guard. The simple and brave souls who are out there protecting the people and they're honestly kind of boring and I wanted to do something a little unique with them. So here's the way that this video is going to work. I have given you three different starting towns, three wildly different types of town guards, and let's talk. So the first town that we're going to talk about is Slaughtard. This town, as indicated by the horrible picture, has already been overrun with sentient insect parasites. These creatures have burrowed into the bodies of their hosts and rather than deciding to take over the world, they just decided they kind of want to live peacefully. Uh, but because of that, Slaughtard is a wash with these sort of parasitic hybrids of humans. And that's where our skin lash comes in. The skin lash is a parasite creature that is essentially a low level grunt that's controlled by the hive mind. And because of that, they protect the rest of the village. Uh, ostensibly, they kind of uphold the law in Slaughtard. Um, and again, they're not going to go out of their way to harass or hurt the PCs, but if the players attempt to cause harm to the hive, or if the players attempt to destroy the town, that's when these skin lashes would activate. If they are peaceful, then they're, you know, the skin lashes are going to be peaceful right back. Um, you could treat this as a, uh, as a one to third level fighter. Again, all of our guards, by the way, are one to third level fighters. Uh, your third level fighters are your captains, your first level ones are your lower grunts. Um, except the one big difference is that this thing can shoot what I call burrowers, which are these lovely little things right here. Um, it's a DC, oh, sorry, DC con save uh, of 18, or otherwise you incubate a parasite. Now, what does that look like? Um, depending on what you would like to do, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. You can make it so it's a horribly debilitating injury. So it's 1d10 damage on day one, and it goes up by d10 until somebody uses magic to wipe out the disease or the player dies. Or... You could do uh, something inspired by shows like Parasite or The Thing, and now there's a sentient extension of whatever happened to the original inhabitants of Slaughtard is now living inside of the player. I really like the idea of having a Parasite that gives them minor magical abilities like Warlock incantations in exchange for health. I think it's kind of neat. But let's talk about Fable Rab next. Fable Rab is a woodland community, uh, basically founded by the descendants of a Fey King's illegitimate children. Um, and as such, the people there, or their guards, the Glade Guardians, um, have a special bond with the land. They actually have the ability to use Fine Familiar. Again, you treat them as first to third level fighters. But what happens is they have the access to first level wizard spells but they can only use them uh, as a, you know, with the touch of their familiar. So for example, if you're this fairy hobbit looking thing, uh, you could use this lizard thing to essentially cast first level spells. This adds a nice little of a level of asymmetry to some of these guards. It means that the party members are not only dealing with people who are martially competent at lower levels, but also have some cool little spell utility. And I think that's kind of neat. But last but certainly not least, let's talk about Glovisburg. This is a town run by gnome artificers, um, and their big trade is they've got a special dust. So when you place that onto metal, it springs to life, and it creates low-level or low-tier golems, um, which is exactly going to be our guard here. This is the Glovis guard, or as I like to call it, and I will be calling it for the remainder of this time, the Metal Boy. Uh, so the Metal Boy is huge, right? 35 hit points, uh, 20 AC, two slams at a plus eight for 1d6 damage, and it's immune to stealth. You can't stealth either forward or pass it. It has detection magic. It knows where you're at all the time. Uh, however, it's big dumb. Um, you can use persuasion or logic puzzles to essentially uh, get this thing to do whatever. Uh, I used a couple different things to talk about this, like the Talos principle or the idea that um, they're not really supposed to cause harm to their creators. So you could potentially use that to manipulate them. Uh, you could use illusion magic to use the creature's face or the creator's face. Um, or you could do what is my favorite thing and hit them with the big logic. 
Um, for those of you who played the Witcher series, I love the Witcher too. At one point, you can essentially use logic and reasoning to cause a golem to self-terminate. Like it literally blows up because you get it trapped into an infinite logic loop and it literally can't function anymore. You could do any of those particular things so uh, players who are really smart can get, figure out a way to get past this, who are really resourceful, who might be able to logic their way out. Um, or you could even like make it your friend. You could even convince it that maybe what its creators are doing is wrong. So essentially what they've done is they've made a pseudo living armor that despite its immense physical prowess um, is is just incapable of thoughts. Literally like no thoughts, only vibes. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you all enjoyed this. Uh, if you have, give us a like, share, comment, subscribe. We really do appreciate it. Uh, in the description below, you will find the playlists, uh, or some of the playlists uh, at the very least, um, which is going to be super cool. If you'd like to check out more of our content, again, if you feel inclined to give us your financial support, it only costs you a dollar to get yourself a game. So even if you you know, you know want to throw us some support, awesome. Uh, but otherwise, you know, you get a game anyway, too. So uh, until next time, though, I'm Kyle Lott. You guys have been awesome. This has been Low Level Monsters Part 13, baby. And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.